compare traditional cultures and their good health, many times, and most of the time, those traditional cultures have figured out a way around the lectin-containing food that they're eating. My favorite example is white rice. Rice was developed 8,000 years ago. Four billion people use rice as their staple. And yet the vast majority of those four billion people eat white rice rather than the healthier brown rice. Why? Because the lectin is in the hall of the rice. And these clever people for thousands of years have been taking the hall away and making it safe. In fact, the Okinawan Diet, uh, which was a very popular book uh, a number of years ago, uh, the Okinawans get about 85% of their calories from a purple sweet potato. They do eat a little bit of rice, but that rice is white. And to my enjoyment, the people who wrote the Okinawan Diet said, wouldn't these people be so much healthier if we could teach them to eat brown rice instead of white rice. Well, that's the ultimate in intellectual arrogancy because here's some of the longest living people in the world and we should be learning from them why their diet works rather than telling them who have a perfect diet in terms of longevity, gee, you'd be so much healthier if you ate brown rice instead of white rice. We should be saying, wow, they're really healthy and they eat white rice. I wonder why that is. Because they've been getting rid of the lectins. So that's the point in all this. Yes, you can make food safe, but you got to know the tricks of our forefathers. Now, are people more or less tolerant to lectins? Well, that's absolutely true. Um, a lot of this has to do with, number one, your gut microbiome. As I've mentioned in other podcasts, our microbiome has evolved to be able to eat a number of the lectin-containing foods that we eat. And the longer we've been eating a particular lectin-containing food, the odds are the longer we've had to have a gut microbiome that can handle it. Unfortunately, over the last 50 years, we've done a really good job of destroying much of our gut microbiome through the use of antibiotics that we take and also through the use of antibiotics that are fed to almost all of our animals that we eat. And finally, over the last 20 years, we've been inundated with the weed killer Roundup, which is actually an antibiotic. If you read the patent by Monsanto for Roundup, it is patented as an antibiotic. It is a weed killer, but what they didn't want us to know is that it kills our microbiome. And so we, we've had a complete decimation of one of our biggest protective features against lectins. Now, uh, Dr. D'Amato, who wrote The Blood Type Diet, uh, is an expert on lectins. And in fact, there is a difference of sugar molecules on the surface of our blood cells, our red blood cells, that we take advantage of in typing people's blood. And believe it or not, we take people's blood and put a particular lectin in that blood. And if the blood cells clump together, we know that they're that particular type. And so blood typing was actually how lectins were discovered. And lectins are sticky proteins, and they actually cause your blood to agglutinate, to clot. So when we think about how plants have protected themselves, clotting your blood is a pretty good way of protecting themselves. There's some interesting evidence that type A's have a different sugar on the surface of their mucous membranes, their nose, their intestines, that make them more susceptible to viruses than people who are type O's. 
and type O's have a different receptor on the surface of their intestines. Now, the problem with the blood type diet is type O's are by far the most common. So, Dr. D'Amato said, without much evidence, the type O's are hunters and hunter-gatherers and that you should be eating meat. And since most people are type O, obviously the blood type diet worked great because most people could basically follow an Atkins diet. And if you think about it, most of the low-carb diets, whether they're a paleo diet, an Atkins diet, a keto diet, work because they're eliminating most of the lectin-containing foods, which are primarily in the vegetables and the grains and the beans that we're eliminating in those diets. So there wasn't anything miraculous about the high protein or the high fat diet. It was actually what was miraculous was the lectin elimination that they didn't talk about because they actually didn't know that that's why they worked. In fact, when my first book, Dr. Gundry's Diet Evolution, was bought by Random House um, 11 years ago now, they had done all the Adkins diets and all the South Beach diets. And I had figured out what was wrong with those diets. And one of the things that was common in both of those diets is you eliminated grains and beans from phase one. After phase one, you reintroduced grains and beans, and invariably people gained weight. So the answer was, well, go back to phase one, where you eliminate grains and beans. And it didn't click in any of the editors' minds that the reason you had to go back to phase one was not to be low carb again, but to get rid of the lectin-containing foods that were the grains and beans. So that was one of the observations that I made that made that such a successful book. Thank you.